Kathy Hatter from the Health District, um, and my job is to plan for how we, as a health department, and specifically in our area, respond to public health emergencies. And everybody's very familiar with COVID as a public health emergency, but we have been working on opioids as a public health emergency since late in 2016. Um, and started giving out free naloxone, Narcan, um, at that point um, to help combat that epidemic. So first we're gonna talk about what are opioids, what is naloxone, and I always have to throw in what is Narcan, because people don't always understand that naloxone and Narcan are the exact same thing, just like Advil and ibuprofen are the same thing. And when we first started doing this, we only had Narcan to give out, the brand name version. And now we really are giving out more of the naloxone, and I'm supposed to stop saying Narcan as much, but sometimes I slip. So I like to make sure you all know that they're exactly the same thing before I get started. And then opioids in particular are a class of drugs, and we're talking about them because of the way they act on our bodies. Um, so it's a class of drugs that include um, street drugs like heroin, they include synthetic opioids, and they also include opioids that we're all very thankful to have. If you go to the hospital for a procedure, you don't want to feel pain. And these opioids are used very appropriately to manage your pain both during that procedure and potentially taking some pills home after the procedure. Um, and used in that context, they're not likely to cause any kind of addiction. But they are also street drugs, and specifically we're seeing, here's some examples of different names, we're seeing street drugs that look just like they came from a pharmacy, what we call pressed pills. And so all of these are considered opioids, and it's a very long list, and when we talk about them, you'll hear them called by their trade names, by their generic names, and also by their street names, which are constantly evolving but they're all opioids, and they all act on the body the same way. Um, and the reason we're here today on Fentanyl Awareness Day is because of this chart, essentially. These are opioid-related deaths in Virginia from 2017 to 2021, and you can see the line is going in the wrong direction. And the studies have shown that the vast majority of these, depending on who you ask, 75, 80, 85% of these, are all related to a drug called fentanyl which is very strong, very potent, and quite honestly, easily available as a street drug right now, okay? Um, people experiencing addiction come from many backgrounds. Um, there's a lot of things in public health that we can say only affect you know, women of childbearing age or men in their 50s. This is not true with opioids. Opioids affect all races, all socioeconomic groups, all ages. We're seeing opioid addiction and opioid overdoses with teenagers at this point. Um, people don't plan to become addicted. They start taking these drugs for one reason or another and then they become addicted and it is very, very hard to stop. Um, at the end of this presentation, you'll have the opportunity to pick up some free naloxone at our table outside. And while you're out there, there's a little QR code. Um, if you scan that QR code, it takes you to a video that kind of goes over what addiction looks like. And it's a really good video to show kids, teenagers, um, to help people potentially make that choice not to take opioids for the first time, which can potentially lead to addiction. Um, naloxone is a very, very safe medication. It is designed to do nothing but counteract an opioid overdose. In an overdose, you get the opioids in your bloodstream and they go to the part of your brain that controls your breathing and it slows your breathing down until you stop. So somebody who dies of an opioid overdose dies because they stop breathing. Naloxone simply blocks that receptor in the brain for a short period of time, which is important. Um, and while it's blocking that receptor in the brain, the person can wake up, start breathing normally again. Okay, this can take multiple doses of naloxone to do that, but it does reverse an opioid overdose. Um, and don't be surprised if you give a dose and it doesn't work and you need a second dose or a third dose, but it does work. Um, it does come in both injectable, auto-injector, and prepackaged nasal spray. I can tell you, as somebody who's an EMS provider, we were giving Narcan in the back of ambulances all the way back in the 1980s. Um, the difference is now it is available as a nasal spray, and it's a very, very safe drug. Okay. So what can make somebody vulnerable to an opioid overdose? What makes somebody more likely to have that problem? Um, and so, I don't know if y'all can see this. Uh, a prior overdose, certainly somebody who's overdosed before is more likely to overdose again. Um, using alone is very risky behavior. And so um, in our urban areas, they have places where people can go um, so that they're assigned a room where they're going to use drugs so that somebody will monitor them. 
I know um, there's some programs in Virginia where people can call a number and say, I'm getting ready to use drugs, please call me in five minutes and make sure I'm okay, and if not, send an ambulance to this address. Um, ways to avoid that using alone risky behavior. Um, somebody who has had a period of abstinence, either because they've been in a treatment program or maybe because they've been incarcerated. Um, if they come out of that period of abstinence and they use an opioid again and they use it the same level, they are very likely to overdose because they don't have the tolerance for it. Um, tolerance builds up with time. And then mixing drugs or experimenting with drugs. Um, these stories of pill parties where people bring pills and just dump them in a bucket and take a spoonful, that's scary. That's very, very scary. Anytime you're mixing drugs, you're, you have no idea what you're getting and, and very risky behavior. So how do you recognize that you're dealing with somebody having an opioid overdose? And I see a lot of nursing students here. I think that's great. You say, you all already know what it looks like. Um, the good news is even for those who are not nurses or not nursing students, this is not hard to recognize. The person who needs naloxone is going to look like they're very, very sick. They are going to be unresponsive. You're not going to be able to wake them up. If they answer you at all, it's going to be a moan or a groan. Um, if you are um, checking for breathing, they either are not breathing at all or it's very, very slow, okay? Um, their skin may start to look very pale or even what we call cyanotic or blue. Um, breathing should not be noisy and you may hear noisy breathing if they are breathing. It may be deep snoring. They get pale, clammy, and if you know how to check a pulse, if you've had CPR class and you're comfortable with that, you may either find no pulse or a very slow pulse. Okay? Um, this is somebody you're clearly going to recognize you need to call 911 for. And I want you to do that as soon as you recognize it. Um, and so what you do to respond, the first thing is call 911. Absolutely. Um, actually, let me back up. Um, I, I always get legal questions, and let me cover those real quick. Um, one legal question I get is, I am not a nurse, I'm not a doctor, and you're telling me I can take this medicine that's prescribed for me and I can give it to somebody else. And how is that okay? And the Good Samaritan Law protects you as long as you're acting within the scope of the training you have received. And part of the training today is we're giving you this medication that right now we have to prescribe to you. I don't have any other way to give it to you right this minute. And it's okay for you to use it on someone else. As a matter of fact, I know you're not going to use it on yourself because if you're awake enough to give it to yourself, you don't need it, right? Okay? <laughs> so the Good Samaritan Law is your protection for that. The other legal question we get is, is, what if I am somebody who is using drugs? Maybe I'm suffering with addiction and I can't break that addiction and I'm using drugs with a friend. And I see that my friend is in need of help. I see that this is somebody I should call 911 for. But I'm afraid if I call 911 for this person, I'm going to get arrested for using drugs. Um, and so we have this legal change here that says, if the only reason law enforcement is aware that you were using drugs is because you did the right thing and called 911 for somebody who needed you, even if you're calling for yourself, then they will not arrest you for that. Um, that doesn't mean they can't arrest you on another day, but they're not going to arrest you that day based on that information because of this change in the law. And it's a two-part slide because it was too small to fit on one. If they are in good faith seeking or obtaining medical attention for um, himself or for another individual, it does require that you remain at the scene. You can't just make the call and scoop. Okay, but you're protected. So those are the two legal questions I get the most. Um, so you've decided this person is overdosing. You're going to um, check for responsiveness. Now before you do that, I want you to think back, who, who's CPR trained? And what do we teach you in CPR before you go over? What do you need to do? Survey the area. Absolutely. You have no idea why this person's laying on the ground, right? So before you go over to them, think about your own personal safety. Look around and see if it's safe for you to approach. Just look for any signs that there's something dangerous to you there before you do. And then go over to the person and check them for responsiveness. Um, and that means shouting their name, tapping them on the shoulder. You can pinch their earlobe. You can do a sternum rub, and that area is shown on the picture there. And check to see if they're breathing. And this <laughs> says to call 911 next. I'm usually doing the two at the same time. Call 911, speakerphone, on the floor next to you while you're doing everything we just talked about. Um, that dispatcher is going to be your best buddy because they're going to remind you of everything you can't remember from today's conversation. Um, they are going to slow you down if you're going too fast. They're going to help you with anything you might forget. Um, so you want to let them know that someone's unresponsive, that you maybe think it's an overdose, and tell them exactly where you are. Okay? Um, if you have to leave the person to get help, 
if you have to leave them for any reason, we want you to put them in the recovery position. And the reason for this is somebody who's unresponsive may vomit. And if they do, they may swallow that and that can be very dangerous for them. So we want to make sure that they're turned on their side. Um, and here's a nice picture of it with their head on their hand and their top leg forward. And this just keeps them from rolling over on their back or all the way onto their face. And you would only use that if you need to leave the person to call for help. We want you to give them two rescue breaths. And when we give out naloxone, we also give out two pocket masks, two CPR shields that look like this. Um, they come wrapped in plastic. This is my demo one. They unfold. It says this side up. This one has a big plastic piece that goes between the person's teeth. And you're going to breathe through this. And that protects you from the person's germs. If they've been using drugs and, and have been taking them orally, if there's any drug residue, that's going to help protect you from that. You're also going to get gloves, which we'd like you to use to help protect yourself. Okay? You're going to give those two rescue breaths. And to do that, they need to be on their back, tilt their chin up, pinch their nose, and give the two breaths. And we want to see their chest rise. And then we want you to administer your naloxone. Now, naloxone comes in a package, actually two of these in a box. That's what we give out, two in a box. And it's very simple to use. You simply peel back the packaging, take out the paperwork, take out the naloxone. And this has only one dose in it, so you don't want to push the plunger on the bottom until it's in the right place. You're going to put this part in their nose, and this one's expired. I get expired Narcan to use for demonstration. This part in their nose as far as you can and still have room for your fingers. And once it's in place, push the plunger. That's it. Okay? So you're going to give that naloxone. It doesn't matter which side of the nose you put it in. Um, it doesn't matter if they're not breathing. Okay? This is a medicine that's absorbed through the mucous membranes in the nose. It's not something they breathe into their lungs. So it can still work even if they're not breathing. Okay? And then we want you to go back to breathing for this person. Because remember I said people who die of an opioid overdose die because they're not breathing. And even if you can't do anything else, you can breathe for them. And so go ahead and breathe for them. It's one breath every five seconds. Again, tilting their chin up, plugging their nose, um, and using your pocket mask to protect yourself. We want to assess the person. If after three minutes they haven't woken up, um, then we want to go ahead and we want to give um, the second dose of naloxone. Okay? And we're hearing stories of people taking four and five doses to wake up. So if there's more available after three more minutes, it's okay to give a third dose. Um, and when law enforcement gets there, they're probably going to give another dose of what they have. Um, I mentioned earlier that the naloxone only stays in the system for a short while. Um, 30 to 90 minutes is what the paperwork says. I like 45 as a good rule of thumb. Um, so it's quite possible if you wake somebody up with naloxone, after a period of time, they will again go back into that overdose. So somebody who is revived with naloxone needs to go to the hospital. Okay? They just need to. Um, and so it's possible you would end up giving another dose if that happened. But hopefully by then, help has arrived and they're already on the way to the hospital. Um, if they wake up, um, again, remember I said, who are we protecting first? ourselves. If they wake up, go ahead and take a step back. Give them some room. This is somebody who may be the sweetest person in the world, but if you have just put them into withdrawal, they could be disoriented, they could be vomiting, and they could come up swinging. And it's nothing against you. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means you've put them into a state where they're feeling really bad and they don't know what's going on. So give them some room for yourself and for them. Let them know what happened. I like to say you weren't breathing a few minutes ago and I need you to stay with me to make sure you're safe, okay? Um, I tend to not say please stay with me until police get here because sometimes they don't want to stay if they hear that, but until help arrives. Um, they may experience that acute withdrawal, okay? And that is really, it's a very distressing feeling. It does not feel good at all, okay? Um, now, you're naloxone because you're you're all going to get naloxone today. Where do you keep it? How do you store it? Um, you know how when you go to the drugstore and you get a, a prescription, they give you a handful of paperwork? Well, I have to give you that too. It's out there with all, all of our stuff. But the most important thing it says is that you need to store it at room temperature. It likes temperatures that you like. Okay? So people say, I'm going to keep it in my car so it's always with me. Well, in the heat of summer, in the cold of winter, that's not a good idea. Um, that's not the preference. 
Um, what we're giving you today expires in November of 24, to give you an idea, but generally two to four years. Um, if all you have, if you have somebody in front of you who you think needs naloxone and all you have is naloxone that is expired, that has been stored hot or has been stored cold, and that's all you have, please use it anyway, okay? But if that's all you have and you don't have somebody who's experiencing an overdose in front of you, let's go get some fresh before you do find yourself in that situation. Um, and so you can get, um, if, you, if you use it, if you lose it, if you store it too long, you can get it from the health department. Um, the community services boards have it. Pharmacies will sell it to you. And who's heard that Narcan's coming over the counter? Yes, so one version of it, the na name brand, has been approved for over the counter. And we expect that to hit the shelves in late summer. And then the other version should be coming after that, okay? But right now, it's not available over the counter. All right, so when we're done here, I understand the Secretary of Education is here to talk to you next. When you're done with all of that, if you'll come out in the hall, we have some paperwork. Just takes a minute to fill it out. We'll give you your naloxone and answer any further questions you may have then. Um, unless there's one or two now. Anybody? All right, well, thank you for your time.